Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by yours truly, Kristen Ostrander. Of course, I want to invite you to um, really think about what you want out of your business. So I'm really excited today to talk about um, the facts about quitting your nine to five, quitting your day job to do online work full-time, specifically selling on Amazon, of course, and talking about the realistic expectations of this, because there's a lot of people talking about side hustles. There's a lot of people that have done some virtual work that have realized that, hey, I can do this virtual thing. I love working virtually. Um, since COVID, I've had to work from home. And although I still hate my job, I get to do it from home. So that's better. And other people are looking for side hustles, some extra income, this and that that could potentially turn into to it. So I get a lot of questions, you guys, every single day, my inbox is flooded with all kinds of questions, um, direct messages on Insta, all kinds of different things. I'm getting DMs, I'm getting PMs, I'm getting emails from everybody, all these different questions. And you would not believe some of the things that people ask me. Um, and I don't answer everybody and all the things and all the time. I mean, who has time for that? that? I mean, I'd have to hire one whole person to be handling all that all the time. So if you've emailed me and I haven't responded back to you, I'm really sorry. My inbox is super full. Um, but I love your emails. So keep them coming because I do answer them when um, they're appropriate and when I see better, when I can really provide some value to you. Um, so please be patient with me if you have already emailed me many times or sent me messages that I wasn't able to answer. However, I really appreciate and value guys' questions, concerns, all that. So please keep them coming. But I want to talk to you a little bit about your, your nine to five, right? A lot of people are doing Amazon as a side hustle and they have a nine to five job that they're considering. And a lot of questions that I've been getting as of, you know, 2020 has come through and now we're into 2021 and people are really looking at all of their job options. A lot of people are going back to in-person work, which they might not want to do because they've enjoyed being at home, whatever that is, or it's a side hustle thing. Maybe you've been laid off. Maybe you've been downsized and uh, there isn't a position for you to go back to. So you really have to ramp up your business and see what's going to be worth working from home. So I want to be full disclosure here and talk to you guys a little bit about um, what it actually looks like to do Amazon full-time. What are some of the real numbers? Now, this is my experience. There's lots of other people out there selling Amazon tens of millions of dollars, this, that, and the other thing. I can only share with you the clients that I've worked with, the people that I know that are doing what they're doing, that have quit their jobs or are doing Amazon full-time and my own personal experience. So please understand that this is coming from me and my per personal experience. Of course, everyone's results vary and their, um, what they put into it and who they follow and all those kinds of things, those things are going to vary. But I'm going to just give you some full disclosure because a lot of people are asking about quitting their nine to five jobs and seeing if they can sell online full-time. So we're going to go over and give you some sort of a plan or some things you want to get pen and paper. If you're walking the dog or in the grocery store or driving, this is one you want to bookmark and come back to, because if this is something that's really on your heart to do, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'd love to quit my nine to five and just do um, online or remote work full time. I'm going to give you a, a kind of a roadmap, a blueprint of what this might look like for you to get your duckies in a row so that you can plan for this. If you're just in the beginning stages of your business, this is something you need to hear right now. If you ever look at this as something you want to do either full-time or earn a full-time income without the full-time. Because guys, I do not work 40 hours a week. I don't. In, in my Amazon business, I don't. I work a lot more on this podcast and on mommy income stuff um, for actually a lot less money than I do on Amazon, but that is my heart's passion and my, my life's work and purpose is to help other people succeed. So that's a little bit different of a reason. And we're going to go through your reasons and your why, but I want to just give you what it takes, like what a little bit of a snapshot into my business. Now, I know this is scary and it's vulnerable for me to be able to share some of these numbers, but it's just full disclosure so that you guys can really realize what it takes from this perspective specifically for what we do and what realistically you might be able to anticipate moving forward. So I'm just going to tell you, like, 
these, these different things, people don't hold back when they send me these emails. I have gotten so many questions like, how much money do you make? What is your salary? What do you pay yourself? How much do you make, make, um, you know, producing courses for people versus selling on Amazon? People ask all the time. And sometimes they ask really nicely. And sometimes they ask meanly like, well, I'm considering selling on Amazon, but I just don't know how realistic it is. I mean, are you really making, you know, just because you bring in seven figures doesn't mean you're making seven figures. What do you earn? And so I respect that question. I mean, sometimes it's a little off-putting because it's like, we don't walk around asking people what they make for what kind of money they make. I mean, we all kind of know that that's really a rude question to ask people, right? Like, what is your salary? Like, can you show me your bank balance? I mean, but in, in this particular position, I feel like I need to disclose these things to you guys. Number one, because some people are asking, but number two, because I actually care about you and your successes. And if you want to make Amazon your full-time income, what you can expect from that. Now, everybody's results are different and where you start from and how much you have to invest both in time and money is going to make the difference. But I'm going to give you a snapshot into my current journey on Amazon as far as the numbers so that you can see the potential for some of this. And so I'm just, it's a little bit scary, but it's also the truth. So I'm just going to let you guys know. So we, when I say we, I'm talking about my Amazon business and my mother and I, my mother and I are full-time 50, 50 Amazon business partners. So we split everything down the middle when it comes to profit and salary and things like that. So I'm going to give you a couple of these numbers so that you can understand about where we are. And we're actually content where we are. So we're not in a growth phase. We're just in a maintenance phase because this is, we're, we're in a very um, comfortable place of where we want to be able to stay. So we're just maintaining what we have and we're bringing new bundles to the table. But we do approximately 1.25 million a year in revenue. That means sales, bottom line sales that we have is about 1.25 million. Our profit margin or what we, our profit at the end of the day with all of our expenses is between 24 and 27% of those, of that revenue. This is something that we've worked to improve year over year. And this is one of the things I can help shortcut you guys. This is why we do this. We are 100% Amazon FBA, meaning we do not sell or fulfill most things. And during 2020, we did some merchant fulfill because Amazon changed some things because of COVID and there was emergency states and we had to kind of do what we needed to do. But uh, the bottom line is we have had at least a 24% margin and upwards of 27%. And one year we had 33%. Um, so it's about between that 24 and 27% profit margin that goes into our pockets after everything that's all said and done. We are 100% Amazon FBA. We do not merchant fulfill our items. We only do um, Amazon FBA fulfilled by Amazon. We are 99% wholesale bundles. So we don't do retail arbitrage. We don't do much private label. We have a couple of private label products, but those are up and coming and ready to be launched as of right now. One of the private label products we have, we use exclusively inside of our bundles. So we don't sell it by itself. We do wholesale bundles only. Wholesale bundles, ordering from wholesale suppliers that already produce things and put them together in highly complimentary bundles. That is how we do business. That's how we source our products. That 1% is because occasionally I still go do book scouting or occasionally I'll go to a yard sale and find something super cool. So we'll throw that into Amazon randomly. But most of the time we don't do that. We're on almost 100% wholesale bundles, 99% or so. 1% for margin of error because, you know, whatever. Um, we do not touch or ship any of our own inventory. So we send all of our inventory to a prep center. That prep center gathers our inventory. They're in charge of receiving, prepping, and shipping our items to FBA for us. They create our, they, they assemble our bundles for us and send them into our FBA account. So we do not touch, receive, package, or prep or ship any of our inventory. This is not drop shipping, mind you. This is literally just, we send all of the inventory that we put together, our bundles that we put together to a prep center, and then they take care of the rest from there. We have a total of between, it's my mom and I as 50-50 business partners, and then we have two other remote 
virtual employees that help. One is our full-time admin and he handles all of inventory management and um, the comings and goings of all the things like that, doing our purchase orders. Um, and then we have someone else that does a lot of our back end uh, Amazon stuff as far as um, paying attention to feedback and cases and missing ASINs and you know the, the back end kind of work that you do for Amazon. So that is full disclosure about what we that we bring in. So when someone asks, you know, oh, how much do you make? Well, you know, I, I make a healthy six figures. It's nice for us. It's nice for me. And I'm content with my current salary. I'm sure we could grow and, and do bigger and better. But actually, I only work on my Amazon business now about one day a week. Occasionally, it spills into two, depending on the cases, depending on Amazon, depending on all, all kinds of things. But one day a week, um, we've got this down to a science. We have some employees that are handling most of the other things. And even still with that, it's a nice, healthy six-figure salary. So can you go full-time on those numbers. I bet you could go full-time with a lot less. So let's just take a, a current, you know, salary, you know, you know, maybe you're not high and six figures in corporate, although we just talked about those kind of numbers, but say you make about $60,000 a year and you're looking to replace that with Amazon. You could do this a lot faster and a lot less than what we do, for example. So at $250,000 a year in revenue on Amazon, at a 24% margin, that's gonna get you about $60,000 a year in profit. So if you're paying someone else, of course, this and this and this, I'm just giving you some numbers to kind of aim at, to think, oh my gosh, if you bring home $60,000 a year, take home pay, by the way, I'm talking about take home pay, then you can make these top line numbers and use your profit margins. And if you're doing things yourself now, if you're gonna outsource some things, it's gonna cost you a little bit more, make, take you a little bit more time. That's approximately $21,000 a month in sales. So just think about where you are right now, whether you're just starting or you've been at this for a while and you're thinking that full-time might be right for you, just consider some of those plumb line numbers. If you want to maybe bring in $60,000 a year as your salary and maybe quit your nine to five to do this full time, you want to be around those ranges. Now, of course, it, you know, your results may vary depending on your costs and things like that, but I'm just letting you know that according to the numbers we have, those are about the numbers you want to consider and, and think about for what you're sending in. And, and if you're going to hire a prep center or somebody to help you out, or you're just going to do it all yourself. I mean, imagine what you could do all yourself if instead of working 40 hours a week plus a commute somewhere else, that instead you worked, say, 30 hours a week with no commute at home without hiring help, what could you get done there? And could you do it for the same amount? Because when it comes to quitting your nine to five job, this goes beyond just money. Of course, we have to start with the numbers, right? That's why I'm starting with the numbers. Full disclosure here about what you're gonna, what about what it takes for this. Now, some of you, it's gonna take much more because you make far more than that at your nine to five, right? So you have to consider that. Some of you might be far less. Maybe you're only working part-time and you think, is that really all I have to do to quit my job? Is like get to a certain sales number? Well, you gotta look at your profit margins, but it goes just beyond money to decide if this is the right decision for you, because it's not all sunshines and rainbows. You know, right now you go to a nine to five job and whether you're salary or hourly, you put in the time or your hours and you get a steady paycheck, right? So if you're going in 40 hours a week and you have a certain salary amount, your check is coming no matter what, right? And so that's something that you're going to have to shift into to thinking about this because with entrepreneurship, with full-time income coming from Amazon, we all know those sales numbers fluctuate, but depends on lots and lots of things. So we're going to walk through some of these things, get your pens, write this stuff down, because if this is in your wheelhouse and you're thinking about quitting your nine to five to do full-time Amazon, um, you want to have answers to some of these questions. All right, so let's dive in. So first of all, we're going to talk briefly about your in a perfect world, uh, because this is relevant. It's relevant to know what kind of lifestyle that you want, what kind of lifestyle you're leading right now. What is your in a perfect world scenario? What is it that you really want? You, you want to quit your job. Why do you why do you want it? Why do you want to quit your job? Why would why would this afford you what you really want in life? What what does it look like? What does your inner perfect world look like? What are you doing every day? What what would you like to see? Would you like to ha not have your commute? Would you like to be home with your family more often or work in a remote setting but still have uh, command of your own schedule? Like you have to decide your reason because your reason and your why and your what you hope to gain from this 
is something that has to be in the forefront of your mind on a regular basis so that you understand what you're working towards. Because let me be real, things are going to get hard. It's not just going to be the straight line to success and that you're just going to have, you know, your happy quit day on the piece of paper that you wrote down. If you ever wrote down goals or wrote down anything and you thought, okay, if I just do X, Y, Z all in a row, all these different steps, I will arrive at said destination. Just like you're following your GPS, right? If I make all these twists and turns and I turn according to this, I will arrive at a destination. Well, entrepreneurship, unfortunately, isn't as cut and dry as your GPS. So you want to know where you're going and for sure have that mapped out, but understand there's going to be detours. There's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be turning around and heading in a different direction at times so that you can finally get to the destination. So keep that in mind as far as your realistic expectations. So what is in your in a perfect world? What do you want? What do you want it to look like? Do you want to move out of your current city? Do you want to stay where you are? Do you want to pay off some debt or student loans or something? So think about what that is and write that down. There's a whole episode on this, by the way, not too um, far back. So look at the plan blueprint and the very first episode in that plan blueprint is planning out your in a perfect world. So if you haven't done that work yet, go back and listen to that episode because we're not going to go through all of that here. So the next thing you need to think about is what in your life are you unhappy with right now? What what is it about your job? What is it about what you're doing now that you're unhappy with? What is causing you the most stress and the most unhappiness in this particular case right here and now? Of these stress factors that you're about to list, which one are out of your control versus controllable? So, you know, certain things are outside of your control. You cannot control the weather. You cannot control COVID rules. You cannot control other people as much as you'd like to think you can. Um, there's certain things that are outside of your control and then other things are within your control as much as your job might bring in most of the income you don't have to stay at that job is there a lot of hindrances for you to quit a job and get another one certainly but that is something that you can control you do not have to work for those people at that job at that location there are job opportunities everywhere so looking at that you know, certain things that you can control versus not like a child with special needs. You cannot control that. That's just something that happens and you have to deal with it. Maybe you have aging parents. Maybe you have an illness that prevents you from doing certain things. Um, whether it's your income, your commute, whatever it is, what are you unhappy with in your life right now? And what's in your control and out of your control? What can you do to change some of these things? And what are the have tos? Okay. Because let's be realistic. If you're thinking about quitting your nine to five job, there are certain things that are required of us, depending on what role we have in our family and our business and whatever else. Um, I am a mom. And regardless if I want to pick up and move to, you know, a beautiful beach house in the middle of someplace, I have to consider all the people I live with, all the people that um, are here and what, how it would impact them to just up and move. I can't be a snowbird yet as much as I want to, because I have a school aged child who needs to go to school every single day, whether it's virtual or not virtual would make it easier. Right? So what are your have tos in life? Um, what are you responsible for? Is it something like, do you have pets? Do you have family members? Do you take care of a neighbor's child to the point where that is something that you would have to consider if you were doing a nine to five that you couldn't do anymore? So thinking about the things, what are the have tos versus the want tos? And be very realistic. Like, what is it that you want to be doing versus not being doing? I mean, yeah, let's if we all, we all hit the mega millions lottery, of course, this is a different conversation, but we're talking about designing a life that you want, regardless of your have tos and want tos, but designing it around that, because let's be realistic. We're not going to all win, you know, some sort of mega millions and then just like do whatever we want. We're going to have to work for a living. So because we work for a living, what is it that you really want to do? What is it that you don't want to do? What is it that you don't like about your job right now that you want to replace? And what this is really key. People don't like answering these types of questions. A lot of people haven't even thought about them. But this is a really key thing to dial in on and really think about. If you, if you leave this episode right now and don't hear anything else, I want you to think about this. What do you think working from home full time will do for you? What will it do for you? What are the, the feelings, the ideas, the the fantasies even that you have in your mind of, oh, if I worked from home and did Amazon, I could fill in the blank. 
volunteer at your kid's school. You could save miles on your car. Maybe you could sell your car because you don't need a car if you're not driving to and from a work, a job that you hate or a job that you love even. What could it give you more time or more money? What is it going to do for you? What is the main benefit that you're after of considering quitting your nine to five? And then you want to ask, what are you giving up if you quit? Because let's be real. Some of these jobs have really good perks, right? Like maybe your nine to five gives you the health insurance that you want and need. And so that's not an extra expense. And that would be something that would cost you out of pocket money if you quit that job and you really, really need this health care. Because it's not impossible. It's just something you have to plan for. What are you going to give up if you quit this job? What are the sacrifices that you're going to need to make in order to convert to full-time Amazon? Because right now, if you're not full-time Amazon, you're doing it as a side hustle. You're doing it on the side. It's something that you're already making some sacrifices in order to make. So what kind of sacrifice would you be making uh, if you did give up your nine to five job to do this full-time? What are you gaining? What are the benefits of quitting that job? And finally, the biggest concern that you have to just write down or think about or contemplate, put it on a sticky note somewhere and just let it roll over in your mind. What are your big fears? What are your biggest fears about quitting your nine to five to do something else, whether it's full-time Amazon or maybe you just hate your job and you, you want to get out of it? What are your biggest fears surrounding that? Because those are things that we can tackle and deal with but you're gonna to need to know what they are first. You need to be aware of all the different parts and pieces that go into this before you just be like, oh, I, it's not just about the numbers, guys. I wish it was, I wish it was that cut and dry. X plus Z equals C equals this amount of money and you can just quit. Um, it's so much more than that. So we really have to think about these different things and what's really realistic because yeah, numbers are concrete, but there's so many things that aren't and they don't just figure themselves out. You actually have to sit down and spend some time thinking and contemplating all of these things. And most people, I'll be honest, most people think about these things for a second, they get too overwhelmed, it's too much work, it's too much to think about, and they just stay stuck wherever they are. They stay miserable, they stay stuck because changing seems so much more overwhelming. Having a job change, having everything change, have instability, have unknown, unpredictable things happen. It's just too much for them to think about. And so they just stay stuck, they stay miserable, and they keep going. But let me, let me just spell it out for you. Staying stuck is hard and changing is hard. So choose which hard that you want because they're both going to be hard. Think about right now, if you're in that place where you hate your job and you're miserable and you can't wait to get out of that, or you just want some more freedom of that. And you are there, picture yourself still there in 10 years. How does that feel to you? Do you want to still be where you're at right now in 10 years? Because if you do nothing, nothing will happen. Nothing will change. So you have to ask yourself if that's where you want to stay, because in 10 years, in two years, in one year, things could be very different or they could still be the same. And the choice is yours. So think about that while you're thinking about these other questions. Would you be willing to make the same amount of money that you make now from home on your own time, on your own schedule, on your own efforts? How about less money? Would you be willing to take less money if you had your own schedule, your own time, your own efforts? You weren't padding the pockets of some corporation. You weren't just working for the man and earning your hourly rate, but you were actually putting more money into your pocket, money that you earned fair and square for yourself. Would you be willing to take less money to give up some of those headaches that you're experiencing? What's it worth to you to gain your freedom, to gain some flexibility and to maybe gain some peace of mind. Maybe you love your job, but you hate your boss. Maybe you love your job and what you do, but you don't like the people around you that they're toxic and you're constantly dreading Mondays because you have to deal with so-and-so who drives you up the wall. What is it worth to you to gain freedom and flexibility and maybe some peace of mind? Think about that. We're going to dive right in right now to your blueprint to quit your job, okay? So we're going to assume that you just did all the hard work, or maybe you put this on pause to answer some of those questions, or you're going to come back and you're going to answer these blueprint to quit your job. What is it that you need in order to make this a possibility for you? Because you guys, it's still early in the year. You can have this plan 
to be your quit day being at the end of this year if you want to. You have some time to figure this out depending on where you are. But there's some some in indicators of this. The number one thing that you're going to need to quit your job is realistic goals and realistic expectations. Time management is super important when you work for yourself. And I, I got to tell you, there's a complete shift between this is your full-time income versus this is side money because you've got the fallback, right? Right now, if you're doing this on the side, it's, it's, it's a project, it's a side hustle, it's something you spend time on, but you're not obligated because it's not paying the mortgage. Let me tell you, those things shift very quickly when all of a sudden your income from Amazon or your side hustle or whatever it is you're doing is all of a sudden the main income source of your house or your life or whatever it is you're doing. Things shift immediately. It's all of a sudden you have to, not whether you want to or not, that's something like we all go to work, right? Because we don't want to be fired. We don't want to be fired because that money pays our bills. And how are we going to pay our bills if we get fired? So we, we step up to the plate and take care of responsibility because we know the consequences if we don't. So may, so your time management and how you manage your time as an entrepreneur full time makes a huge difference because you don't have boss man standing over you. You only have the bills that are going to continue to come in. So that's the only thing really standing over you when it comes to your time management. You will no longer have a boss that says you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do all these different things. It's you telling you what to do. So your time management, one of the things you really need in your realistic goals is making a mastered list of the weekly tasks and make yourself some sort of schedule. Flexible schedule, of course, but some sort of schedule. Like, what will you be doing on Monday when you sit down at your desk? What will you be doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? What time, what kind of hours are you going to keep? And what are you going to do in those hours? Set a timer and stay focused on one task. Close the other tabs, silence your phone, just like you would be at your job. Hopefully you wouldn't be able to just be on your phone the whole time and you would have to actually do your job. So making a list of those things and what needs to be done when and having that set aside, even if you aren't doing this full time, that's a great thing to be able to do. Set a timer, know exactly what you're gonna do and when, this is how you run your side hustle. If you guys never heard of the 15 minute hustle, it's the book I wrote about um, getting things done in 15 minutes or less and just about making the master list. Go to 15minutehustle.com. You can get that. You can also get that ebook on Amazon and get your uh, 15 minute hustle chart and start working on it. It gives you all of the instructions on how to do those things. Another big indicator of your realistic expectations is that, that what you're putting in is what you expect to get out. If you do not have more time or money to invest and you wanna see 100% growth, that's not realistic. Base your goal on the additional time and resources that you have available to invest. So can your business grow with just extra time? Absolutely, yes. You can improve listing. You can do so many things to your business for free that can help you grow instantly if you have more time. If you have more money, of course, you can do both. You can have more time and more money to invest into your business to help it grow. Of course, that's going to be helpful. But your goals need to be in alignment with the time and energy that you're also putting in along with your resources. So if you invest an extra thousand dollars into your business in an extra 10 or 15 hours, then expect that type of growth to come into your business you know, an extra thousand dollars at 24% um, profit margin coming in um, will give you a significant increase when it comes to that, like depending on how you're managing it. So make sure that whatever goals that you have are in alignment with the resources and the time of and time and money that you're putting in. You're only going to get what you put in out. You can't expect 10 times more when you're really only investing a couple more hours a week or a couple hundred more dollars. Like make sure that those are balanced in between what you expect versus what you're putting in. Plan your goal to be increased depending on your output. Next is going to be your plan. Your need to take a day to make a plan. 
The day doesn't just jump on your calendar. It doesn't just happen. You're not going to just make time for it. You have to open up your calendar and put a day on there to plan for what you want, to plan your goals, to look at the numbers, to make your exit strategy. Because that's really what you need. You need an exit strategy out of your nine to five and into this and all the things written down. You will feel so much better if you do this. Take a day, look at your calendar, right? I don't care if it's three months from now and that's all the time that you have. A Saturday afternoon, a Sunday evening, a Monday morning, whatever it is that you have on your schedule, look at it. Write down exactly what you want to accomplish during this planning time. What are your resources that you're going to have available to you? What are you going to do to contribute to your goal and the steps that you're going to need to take to get there? That's exactly what you're supposed to do on these planning days. For example, if you want to increase sales by 50%, you need to increase your inventory by 50% or increase your ROI or your average selling price, your ASP, about by about that much. So if you're currently selling $20 items and you want to increase your sales by 50%, you could start looking at $40 items, $40 bundles. You could increase the amount of money that you put in. Either way, you want to set some goals for yourself and make sure that they match what we just talked about as far as your, your input into those goals. If you want to move into wholesale, you're going to want to make these plans for yourself. So first of all is taking that day to write this stuff down. And I mean everything from your in a perfect world all the way to, okay, these are in my perfect world. This is what I'm going to really gain from quitting my job. These are the things that these are stressors that are going to be reduced. This is what it's going to be worth to me. Now let's execute the plan. So now we're talking about we're on planning day. What are we going to be writing down? What are we going to be planning? And what is it that you want to accomplish? So let's take that. We want to increase. Maybe you're bringing in $10,000 in sales right now and you want to get to that 21,000, which would then afford you to quit your job. So you're going to need to double your sales. So what is that going to look like over time? Maybe you don't have the finances to all of a sudden just invest uh, an extra five, $6,000 into inventory immediately. Okay, great. You can work up to that. In the meantime, there's other things you can do. So whatever your goals are set for, you need to make sure that your input, your time and money or both are inputted equally for that. So if you want to move into wholesale, if maybe that's, you know, you're still doing some retail arbitrage and you want to move directly into wholesale. So make it a plan to say, I'm going to contact five new vendors every single week and open accounts and then I'm going to use those accounts. You're going to do the research and find the products. So writing that stuff down step by step. Each week, I will reach out to X amount of vendors. Each week, I will follow up with these vendors. I will get catalogs. I will open them. I will start doing product research. Making yourself a plan. So that is the most important thing that you want to be doing to not just say, okay, I want to get to these levels. What are you going to do about it? Because just saying out loud your goals is not enough. You have to plan the steps that you're going to take to get there. Let's talk about timeline, okay? Because the timeline for your goals also need to be realistic. This is not going to happen overnight. So you need to make a weekly, monthly, and yearly plan to do this. And guys, I'm not, I have learned how to be a better planner. But honestly, I hadn't been a really good planner over my life. And it's taken me a lot of time to realize that I can say all the ideas in the world that I want, but in order to make them happen, I have to have a plan. I have to have steps to take. I have to have actions to take to get towards those goals. Knowing your goals and even writing them down is not enough. It is what is next. What are you going to be your steps? So this is not going to happen overnight. It just won't. I don't care if you have a million dollars to put into inventory right now, it still won't happen overnight. You're going to need to learn the ebbs and flows of the business and seasons and when Amazon makes changes, how you need to adjust and all these different things. So you need to also make estimates and projections based on averages of your current numbers. So if your current numbers for the past year or two or even months have steadily increased, look at why. Did you put more time in? Did you put more money in? Did things just automatically start selling because it was the right season? Um, if you've been doing retail arbitrage, you need to look at some of the, the inventory that came in and what was selling and for what reasons. Was it just because it was a great price or high demand? Look for what has already afforded you some increases and base your projections on that 
plus the increase. If you're going to give yourself an increase in either time or money or both, um, use those estimated projections to say, okay, on 10 hours a week and 500 bucks a week, I am doing this amount of sales. What happens if I double that? Can I double my output? Um, can you expect double the return? Sometimes. It depends on how well you're spending your inventory dollars and things like that, but you know, paying attention to those things. So here's an example. If you make $500 a week in profit, how much more can you make if you double the hours of work? Can you buy better inventory if you just double the hours, even if you don't double the investment? Can you spend that $500 a lot better if you have double the time to look for product? My answer is 100% yes. I had to do this at one point when I was still doing retail arbitrage way back in the day. Um, I didn't have a lot more money to invest, but I had a little bit more time to invest because one of my kids went to school full time and I was able to then make that transition of saying, okay, I got 20 more hours a week to work with. And I started looking for better inventory because I didn't have extra money. I had extra time. So instead of putting something in the cart that, you know, when I was doing retail arbitrage, when maybe buying something that would have gotten me, um, 90% ROI, I put that back and waited for something that was 110% ROI. So now I had time to spend more time looking for product. So that's something that, that you need to consider with that. And also how much time are you spending on the tasks in your business right now? If you don't know this, you can take a two week challenge or even a one week challenge and write down what you do every 15 minutes for two weeks. Yes, that seems crazy and daunting. It's almost like tracking your food when you're, you know, trying to look at, you know, whether or not you have some allergies and kind of reactions and stuff. Yes, it's data collection, but you learn a boatload about how you spend your time and how you procrastinate and how you waste time um, when you're actually tracking your time so that you can see, okay, don't underestimate how long it takes you to do something because most people underestimate. They think, oh, this will take me about 20 minutes when really it takes them an hour. So you don't want to underestimate how how long it takes you to do something because you want to be realistic about your timelines and your expectations. Now, asking yourself the question of how much more could you do when you have more time? So consider that as well, because time tracking is really something that you can really take a good snapshot of your life and say, this is what this is realistically how much time I spend doing this. This is realistically how much time I spend doing this. And what would that look like if you could spend more focused time on the things that make you money? namely getting really good profitable inventory that turns quickly enough for you to make your decent profits. So that's something that, that can you spend more time on inventory tasks to make you more money there. So these are things to consider and what is realistic based on your data and your numbers, not somebody else saying, I made $20,000 in my first month on Amazon. Um, don't even buy into all that. What you need to do is focus on what you're doing here and now and what's going to get you to your next small goal. Financial planning is really important when you're talking about quitting your job and moving into something else because it's about the money, right? At first, it's got to be about the money. You've got to know where you're at and where you stand so that you know where you need to go. How much do you need to make in order to earn the same amount you make at your current job? You need to know your numbers. If you don't even know your actual average take home pay, it's something you need to calculate and have on your desk, do the numbers. How much do you bring in weekly or monthly or yearly that you need to um, meet those expectations? What are your current sales? Are your current sales $1,000 a month or $8,000 a month? What's your current ROI? What's your current profit margin? After all is said and done and all of your expenses, how much of that can you keep for yourself? Do you have a master list of your expenses, all your expenses? I'm talking about education. I'm talking about driving. I'm talking about miles. I'm talking about um, shipping, your prep center or somebody you pay or your, your envelopes and your boxes and your tape, all that. Do you have a break even point? Do you know how much you're basically spending time and dollars and what's your break even? What can you do to not lose any money, but you're not making any money? These are important things to know. You guys are, this is a legitimate business. I don't care if it's your side hustle. I don't care if it's something you're not spending that much time and money and energy on. This is a real legitimate business. So you need to run it like one. And if you don't know how to do it, it's okay. There's lots of training out there specifically even right now of what you need to be able to keep track of. It's not 
complicated. It's just something that you necessarily need to have at, at any given time. I should be able to ask you, what's your current profit margin? And I'm talking about monthly profit and loss. What's your current profit margin? You should be able to spit that out. You should know those things. What was your, what were your Amazon sales last month? You should know these numbers. And how much do you need to, once you have these numbers, how much do you need to increase that in order to make your current salary? These are just the part of your planning day. You need to sit down, ask yourself these questions, write this stuff down. Okay, so I make about $500 a month right now on Amazon, my, my profit, my take home, my you know, after all expenses. So if you need to make $3,500 take home pays, then you're gonna need to increase that by seven times, $500 times seven times. So these are just like quick calculations that you can do to say, okay, what do I really, where realistically, where am I? So I can know where I'm going. Are you willing to accept or can you afford to accept less during your transition period? This is also something that you can look at your budget, your monthly budget and, and figure that out. Do you have to at least make what you're making now or could you live on a little less in order to make this transition properly? If that's a big deal. You don't necessarily have to replace your salary. Some people do because they don't make a lot. So they have to make at least that amount. So think about what is your bottom line of I must make this much or else. And of course, you want to have a little cushion in there. You also want to plan for health care. If your current job is covering extra expenses that you aren't used to paying, out of pocket, it's something that you need to consider. Health care for a family um, can be, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars a month, depending on where you live and all the different things. Is there child care that you're going to need? These are different things to think about when you're when you're considering changing or quitting your job. And are you going to be able to afford that? Does your company have a COBRA program that you can continue paying while you're out of work or whatever that or you're transitioning to something else? So when you become self-employed, those are things that you really have to pay attention and consider. So if you're going to have to pay that out of pocket, maybe you're going to need an extra thousand a month. And so you need a budget for that. Taxes is some part of your financial plan. And again, I am not a tax preparer. I am not prepared to give tax advice. This is just some plumb lines and rules of thumb that you want to consider. It's suggested that you save 15 to 20% of your um, profit to pay taxes. You don't pay taxes on your revenue. You pay taxes on what's left over in the end after all of your expenses. So if your average um, monthly, you know, profit is a thousand dollars, you want to make sure you're saving about 150 to 200 dollars of that for to pay taxes. Now your tax preparer can talk to you more about that. Your personal situation might be different. You might have a spouse that's in a high tax bracket and covers some of the taxes and it might even out. So make sure you're somewhere paying attention to taxes. That's legit. And tax man ain't going away. So you're going to have to pay him something. So paying attention to taxes and making sure that you're working that into your budget. Um, and just because you have more time to invest doesn't mean that you have more money to invest. So where will the extra funds come from? Do you need to save um, your profits right now for six months before you can quit your job so that you have a buffer? I, ex I always let people know that you should have some sort of savings or some sort of buffer in the event that you might have a bad month on Amazon. This happens. This has happened to us that talk about COVID, talk about what happened um, during those times where Amazon just shut the doors to be able to, you know, send anything in for a time. And we had to make quick changes and quick pivots. Um, if you have someone on your payroll, that's a big deal. If you don't have reserves and you all of a sudden have lost a month of business for whatever reason, maybe there's a disaster and it ruins the prep center and we have to worry about insurance claims. Okay, things happen, um, but you wanna be able to be prepared for that. So making sure that you might have a little bit of a buffer to at least cover a month of expenses if in the case you have just a really bad month because you're not gonna be used to that. On your nine to five, if, you if your company has a bad month, it's not on them, they still give you your paycheck. So it's on the company to figure that out. But if you're just an employee, you're going to be the company owner. So you're going to need to know um, if you need to invest a little bit more money, where's that going to come from? Are you going to plan on getting a small business loan? Are you going to use your credit cards, which I highly discourage um, because I built a cash-based business up until a certain point where we were able to take a small um, loan to be able to up the game a little bit, but that wasn't until really high six figures. Uh, we ran a cash-only business and 
and actually still do right now. Um, we did have taken a couple of small business loans here and there to get some more inventory and get over some plateaus, but that's very far down the line. I don't suggest that, especially if you're new or you're not sure about what and don't spend your life savings either until you figure out how to um, properly invest in the right kind of inventory. I see people make these mistakes all the time. Like, I have $25,000 to start a business. I'm going to jump right in, order all these things and, you know, sell them on Amazon and everything's going to be great. And then they have no idea what they're doing and they lose all their money learning. And we don't want you to do that. So making sure that you have a plan for your funds, if you do have them, if not a plan to earn some extra funds or save for a certain amount of time as your side hustle before you actually quit. The other thing you're going to need is organization. Um, this is not the same as running your business uh, for on the side. It's not the same. It doesn't have the same priority level. All of a sudden you've gone from a back burner uh, side hustle to all of a sudden, if I don't make this money, my mortgage doesn't get paid is quite a different thing. So organization is going to have to be at the top of your level here as far as what are you going to be doing? Because you're going to have to be self-regulated. Most people aren't used to that. They just collect their paychecks every Friday and they go to their job, they do their thing, they collect their paychecks. But now you are head honcho and in charge of everything and you have to make those shifts. Do you have a master financial sheet or are you using something like QuickBooks or um, some sort of something that will help you with your bookkeeping? Do you have a master task list? Again, we're revisiting this for your business and all the things that need to be done daily, weekly, monthly. Um, for those hub members, my hub members here, you guys have this master checklist that I've made for you in your Amazon Files hub membership. So go find those. If you didn't realize that that was existing, it is existing. Go find it in your hub student portal and you'll be able to find it there. Um, these master lists are really important so that things don't slip through the cracks because I tell you what, when things slip through the cracks in business, it's a huge headache to have to go backwards and do all these different things, or you miss things or money is floating out of your bucket and you don't even realize it until it's too late. So we don't want that to, to be a thing. You want to make sure that you're super organized. Now I am um, getting there. I am a work in progress when it comes to organization, but this is what I've had to learn over time. I had to get more organized because things were slipping through the cracks. Don't be like me. Get organized ahead of time. Even if you're not very good at organizing, you can organize a few things. Do you know what you need to do on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis? Do you have file systems, a place to organize papers and digital papers and digital invoices and all those things? Do you have a system and a process for that? Do you have a physical space to operate uh, at the highest capacity you can operate? So if you're doing prep and shipping from your home, do you have a dedicated space, whether it's a garage, a kid's room, a guest room, a basement, your office, your bedroom, your dining room table? Do you have a dedicated space that you can operate in without um, becoming quickly overwhelmed? Because that is a big deal, especially if you're going to start out doing your own inventory um, and not using a prep center, you're going to need to have space to start with the influx of more and more. And if you're already overwhelmed in your space, I would consider a prep center. I would consider a place where they can do the prepping and shipping for you so that you don't have to do those things. Um, it's something to really consider. You want to be able to have space for wh wherever you're working. So, so far, you know, we're talking about your financial plan, you're in a perfect world, your realistic goals, um, what is going to be worth to you, your timeline, your financial plan, organization, and finally, okay, and it's not finally and the end and it's the bottom of the totem pole. This is something that is really important. And I know that there's a lot of people that, um, you know, think this is this fluff, foo-foo kind of stuff, but it's so realistic that I have to mention it is the support that you need because we all need support in what we're doing and let's be honest sometimes our spouse or sometimes our friends or sometimes people just don't get it if they've never run a business from home if they've never even had a business and they've only ever worked a nine to five somewhere where they clock in and out for some there's no shame in that there's nothing wrong with that some people aren't made for entrepreneurship most people are not I'm just going to say that most people are not built for entrepreneurship. 
they don't know how to handle their emotions. They don't know how to handle their stress. They don't know how to manage themselves, let alone other people. They don't have the organization skills. They don't have the financial skills, whatever it is. It's not for them. They're not self-directed. They're not self-motivated. Look, we don't need all of that to come from ourselves all the time. What we need is support from other people who understand and can give good, solid advice and things that you can take action on. Not everybody can work for themselves. Not everybody can stay on task and know what needs to be done and do it and by in what order it needs to be done. When you're your own boss, you are in charge of all the things from the trash to the profit, all of it. So you have to have a way to operate that that's going to be working for you, whether you hire things out, which I highly recommend doing, even starting with the housework if you have to, um, to be able to hire things out to get there. But um, what are you going to be putting in place to make sure that things are getting done? Are you going to create your own checks and balances? Do you have someone or a group of someone to reach out to when you have specific questions, when you're having a really bad day, when you want to hit your head against the wall? You guys, this happens to me like, a couple of times a month at least where I want to pull my hair out to the point where it's like, I've got to go and get some support from people who just get it. People who understand that the struggle is real and that we're not by ourselves because that is the fastest way to get you back to a nine to five is saying, Oh, I don't think this is going to work for me. I feel alone. I feel isolated. I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. I feel like I'm failing. Where can I go for support? for accountability? Do you have a group of somebody's that you can go to uh, to hold you accountable or somewhere you can just put things out there that you're sharing your wins, you're sharing your struggles? Because tough skin is gonna be really important when you're going full-time entrepreneurship. You're gonna to need to get a little bit tougher. You're gonna to have to have, days are gonna be hard. Some days are gonna be amazing. It's like this constant up and down journey. You have to be prepared for that. And that part of that is mindset. Part of that is surrounding yourself with people who understand your people, right? People that get it, people that speak the language, people that understand um, and that can help and support and say, here's what's worked for me. Try this. Um, sorry, you're having a bad day. You know, maybe, you know, just support. We all need support and help. And so do you have that? Somebody to troubleshoot with when you're running into issues um, because you're gonna need to be tougher. The money's not gonna be consistent. That's another thing that you've gotta be tougher about. And when it comes to the support, we're gonna have good days. We're gonna have bad days. We're gonna have good months and bad months. Hell, we're gonna have good years and bad years. Hello, 2020. 2020 was great for some people and terrible for others. So we're going to have years where they're just going to be like that. That doesn't mean we're all a bunch of failures and we're going to throw in the towel and have to go um, get our nine to five back. There's going to be highs and lows and ups and downs. How are you going to weather that and with whom? And so that's where I really encourage you to build a community or join a community like mommy income community, um, the Amazon files of uh, Facebook group. You can come in mommyincome.com slash join us with your hashtag quit day, and you can join our group of supportive people that can help along the way. If you are a wholesale bundler and you already have wholesale bundles course, you have access to join the hub. The hub is our membership group where we do uh, group coaching every single month with yours truly. Group coaching plus extra training from either me or an expert of somebody that can come in and really help you dive deep into your business. And it has its own support group, people that are um, really dedicated to their full-time businesses, whether they're full-time or part-time, want that extra help and support that is available to you. You do not have to do this alone. So if you are in the group and you um, are a wholesale bundler and want to join the hub, um, you can reach out to um, myself or to Maureen at admin at mommyincome.com and join the hub. You go to mommyincome.com slash hub, of course, and check that out there. But I'm just saying this because the days, the weeks, the months, the things do get hard. We have a lot of people in the mommy income group that have quit their nine to fives that have left the corporate jobs behind, regular jobs, any jobs, and they're doing Amazon full-time. <clears throat> I know we have lots of, you know, success stories about that. You know, Eric quit his job last July in the middle of COVID uh, because he has reached a point where he could do that. Uh, lots of different people here have, and some people have not, like our friend Lori. Well, Lori refuses to quit her job because she knows how volatile it can be out there in Amazon. And although she has grown and built up her business and she's doing wholesale bundles and she's doing well, 
she likes the the security of her job that she has and she actually likes her job so and she can work remote now so she's okay with not quitting that job but some people are like oh like michelle who was commuting um an hour a day in traffic and yeah she was making a great salary and she didn't hate her job necessarily but it was all the hours and the commute and not seeing her family not seeing her son and it was her motivation to be like i am willing to live on less to not live with this and now she's just you know doing so much better and she's at home and she's you know doing the things that she wants to be able to do so if that's something it's it's important to have that support and these are the people that are in these groups that can help support you they've been there they've done that they understand the struggles they understand the wins they understand the tops of the mountains and the valleys so you want to be able to connect with people because not everybody gets it I am in a group of my friends, my core friends that I've had for a really really long time my girlfriends and I am the only business owner. And so to talk about business with them, they're great and they can offer some different insights and perspectives, but they just don't get that part. And so it's really helpful to have a group of people that you can talk to that do get that part. And it, part of the building the community is actually just being honest and open and vulnerable, asking the questions, offering information, asking for help. Um, you know, a lot of people lurk in Facebook groups because they just don't want to say anything or they're just very private, but they want to learn. Um, the greatest things don't happen when you're lurking. The greatest things happen when you are vulnerable enough to um, ask for help and ask for direction and get some feedback on some things. And the hub is really a great place to be able to do that. Also, a lot of these people met each other in workshops. I've done over 12 workshops now, live in person, a couple of them virtual. We have one coming up actually in, in um, this week um, that, that has still has a couple of seats left and there's a few so you might want to sign up now if you want to do a virtual workshop but a lot of the people in the community have learned have worked with each other in workshops and then now they're friends outside of that they're making mastermind groups and different things so mommyincome.com slash workshop it's uh, you got a few days I think to register for the next one and uh, it's a really great way to meet people and share part of your story and share about your business and get help and give help and just have a community of people. Everybody wants to succeed, wants each other to succeed. The rising tide raises all ships. So if we can help raise the tide for everyone, then we all win. And so that's the kind of community that we're building of people that can support one another. And if you want to be part of that, mommyincome.com slash workshop. Um, we have a couple uh, of virtual workshop coming up here shortly. And um, we're planning more, hopefully in-person ones uh, by the end of this year. So I hope to meet you guys and see you there. But just remember, if you have a quit day, if you want to schedule a coaching call to work through some of these things, um, you can just reach out. I would love to be able to help you make your quit day blueprint so that you can be on the trajectory to quit your nine to five and have something that's all yourself. Don't, don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to connect with people, even through DMs or something like that. Say, hey, I love your comment. It seems like you're doing really well in your business. Can we have a chat? Um, talk with people, reach out because that's how you're going to get the most support and help in you wanting to do this. You can do it. It's possible for you. It's not going to be possible without a plan and without a, a clear roadmap and blueprint of exactly where you're going. And just following some of these, go back and listen to it on slow, write these things down and create your blueprint and then send it to me. I would love to be able to see your quit day blueprint and give you some feedback on it and just give you like a virtual hug and tell you that you're on the right track. So um, feel free to do that. I know you guys can be anywhere at any time right now listening to anyone else. And I don't take that for granted. Thank you for being here and listening to me and reaching out. Uh, I love your questions. I love your comments, your reviews, all those things. And I want to continue to um, raise your tide so that you can have the same successes that I've had and many uh, hundreds of other of my students have had. So see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.